Earlier today, SEC Chair Gary Gensler talked against the crypto market bill ahead of its vote in the House. However, the U.S. House did approve Fit 21 with a wave of Democratic support. We'll take a look at how that voting shaped up, what it means for us going forward, and how Gary Gensler might feel the ripple effects of this vote. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive in. So we're down a little bit on the day, but it's because we haven't really had the market fully digest everything that's happening. So we can expect some volatility here in the coming days, but holding at about 2.57 trillion with Bitcoin at 69,000 XRP at about 53 cents, holding that seven spot, uh, but certainly has some exciting times ahead as we see the outcomes from the vote that happened just a little bit ago. But earlier today, SEC Chair Gary Gensler denounced the crypto market bill to the surprise of absolutely no one, as Gary Gensler has been staunchly anti-crypto here. He publicly expressed his dissent against the Financial Innovation and Technology Act for the 21st century in a statement released earlier this morning. He says, Fit 21 would create new regulatory gaps and undermine the decades of precedent regarding the oversight of investment contracts, putting investors and capital markets at immeasurable risk, per his statement. The SEC chair's main argument centers on his belief that the act undermines the classification of crypto assets as investment contracts, which would remove them from the SEC's oversight and hinder investment protection efforts. I was going to post a few clips earlier that I had recorded from the actual debate uh, as they were talking about this in the House, but I decided against it because it was mainly uh, people like Maxine Waters and Brad Sherman whining about this and, again, spouting out the same kind of talking points as Gary Gensler, saying that this would undermine regulation and that the Howey test was good enough, which we obviously know is not. So, Gensler argued that Fit21 could allow crypto firms to self-certify their crypto investments and products as decentralized and under a special class of digital commodities and thereby avoid scrutiny by his SEC. The agency's ability to challenge these self-certifications would be limited by resource constraints, potentially leaving a vast majority of the crypto market unregulated, he said. Self-certification process risks investor protection, not just in the crypto space. It could undermine the broader $100 trillion capital markets by providing a path for those trying to escape robust disclosures, prohibitions preventing the loss and theft of customer funds, enforcement by the SEC, and private rights of action for investors in the federal courts, he said. What if perpetuators of pump and dump schemes and penny stock pushers contend that they're outside the securities laws by labeling themselves as crypto investment contracts or self-certifying that they are decentralized systems, he added. The SEC leader said the bill excludes crypto trading platforms from the definition of an exchange and gets rid of historically tested frameworks such as the Howey test, which would ultimately put investors at risk. So what do we know here? This bill has been supported by a number of organizations in the crypto space. We've even seen Republicans and Republican candidate and former Republic or former Republican President Donald Trump and his advisors come out in support of the crypto market structure bill. Uh, however, we had some very surprising things today, like Nancy Pelosi considering to vote for the bill and then actually voting for it. So let's take a look at what happened in D.C. Besides what Gary Gensler said this morning in opposition, we did see a vote actually come through. The House's passage of the digital assets legislation passes the crypto baton to the Senate, where odds remain low for decisive action. Remember, you've got people like Elizabeth Warren there coming out in opposition against basically all things crypto. So the House vote went 279 for, only 136 against to approve the Financial Innovation and Technology or FIT21 Act with a very strong showing from House Democrats. The passage of this bill marks the industry's most significant legislative accomplishment in Congress. The crypto industry rep recorded its biggest 
ever U.S. policy win when the House approved a wide-reaching bill to establish regulations for digital assets mar uh, digital asset markets, and it saw a number of Democrats crossing party lines. The FIT21 uh, bill marks the first time a major crypto bill cleared one of the chambers of commerce. The issue heads to the Senate, where its future is a bit murkier because there's no counterpart bill. Support for such an effort remains unclear there, and the necessary committees haven't done the same level of work on crypto. The U.S. has fallen behind other global jurisdictions in establishing crypto regulations, and despite this win today, Wednesday, May the 22nd, 2024, implementing such oversight is far from complete. We need rules of the road, said Rep. Gottheimer, one of the Democrats who bucked the opposition of the White House and the ranking Democrat on the House Financial Services Committee, Maxine Waters. He called it well-reasoned, thoughtful, bipartisan legislation and argued before the vote that it's fit to become law if we work together. Overall, 71 Democrats and 208 Republicans voted in favor of the bill versus three Republicans and 133 Democrats who voted against it. Now, President Joe Biden opposed the bill with a policy statement, though he didn't say he would veto it, as we saw that stronger statement he made on the other bill about a week ago. SEC Chair Gary Gensler, as we saw in the earlier piece we reviewed, uh, came out strongly against this with his lengthy public statement saying it wasn't needed and endangered existing regulations and, of course, his power at the SEC. But this legislation, largely driven by House Republicans, would establish a regime to regulate U.S. crypto markets, setting consumer protections, installing the CFTC as a leading regulator of digital assets and the watchdog of the non-security spot markets. And it would more clearly define what makes a crypto token a security or a commodity. Now, Maxine Waters, as I mentioned earlier, was complaining here, arguing the bill is seeking to let the crypto businesses who have been dodging securities laws avoid responsibility. They've already made billions of dollars unlawfully issuing or facilitating the buying and selling of crypto securities, Waters said, and Republicans are now proposing to reward these illegal activities by making these activities legal. But prior to the vote to, or earlier this afternoon, the House did debate a handful of amendments, including from various reps, both Democrats and Republicans, and Rep. Greg uh, Kaser's amendment to change a crowdfunding exemption from $75 million to $5 million was defeated. However, the rest of those were adopted. And interestingly enough, as reported by Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business earlier, uh, Nancy Pelosi actually did vote for this. So uh, again, a rather shocking outcome when you think about this. Not what you would expect to see, but we did get it through the house. A very uh, interesting outcome, one that maybe we didn't expect to come through with this level of support. Um, so let me know what you think down below. Is this going to give us that framework that we need? Will the Senate actually come to a vote that will move this forward? That's a big question because it has to pass both. It has to get signed off by the president. So this is uh, the first step, step one in a process, and it's going to take additional work. This is not going to go into place overnight. It just made it through the House. So keep that in mind. Uh, more work to be had, but a major, major step, a significant uh, milestone in crypto legislation. Again, this is the industry's most significant accomplishment in Congress to date. So let me know what you think down below. Drop a comment uh, on what you think the outcomes of this will be in the future. And if this is just plain for the politics of an election year, people worried about their jobs in D.C., or is this actually the sign of the tides turning and we're actually going to see some real change in D.C.? I'm curious to know your thoughts. And as always, drop a like if you found any value here. It helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. And go Mavs.